Meron na kami problema sa usapin ng access na no? sa overfishing, sa illegal fishing. Nadagdagan pa ito sa usapin ng climate change, no? Yung pagkamatay ng bahura at iba pang uh, rekurso sa pangislado, pati yung uh, sea grasses at siyempre yung mga organismo na nakatira dito na siyang kinakain ng mga isda. So, kaya mas malaki ngayon ang problema ng mga katulad naming maliliit na mga mga isda. Hindi na nga makasabay sa abanting uh, paggamit ng uh, isda uh, na dagdagan pa nitong epekto ng climate change. So, we have a different story here, very different from other reefs in the country. Na nakita na natin na pag tinamaan ng coral bleaching, maraming coral reefs natin ang talagang hindi na nakaka-rebound. Talagang nagda-die off na sila and uh, hindi na nakaka-recover. Ten years ago, coral bleaching took place and research showed that about 21% of the corals in Tubataha got bleached during that period. the home for many marine organisms, around 25% of the marine organisms live on coral reefs. Um, it's the primary source for our food, no? seafood, isda, no? sea cucumber, and all that. And it's also a source of possible medicines no? sa iba ibang organisms na natira doon. Because the other function is, of course, they provide um, livelihood no, for our coastal communities bilang fishermen and attraction for for tourists for snorkeling and diving. Una una, uh, ako personally I consider this a world class uh, diving destination, uh, and in fact I think that's the reason why we're getting a lot of uh, even uh, foreign divers coming into Manila. If you're a seasoned diver you will recognize this place as one of the best dive sites in the country. And that's one reason why I established here already. They also serve as natural buffers for waves, yung malalaking add-on sa dalampasigan. Tubataha is a major source of fish and coral larvae that enriches fisheries in the surrounding area. So it's, a, it's an ecological contribution. And it also contributes to the food security of, of the Philippines in that sense. And I think another very important contribution of the lessons learned in Jutata is that we can protect Philippine reefs. If we can protect a place so far away, we can protect places that are nearer to our homes. And I think it should be an inspiration to many other uh, practitioners of marine conservation. Globally, reefs are important in terms of how we address climate change because it is the biggest carbon sink. It absorbs all our carbon emissions. But it is also wrong to, to, con to continue thinking that the oceans can actually continue absorb, uh, absorbing uh, CO2 emissions. So that it's why it is important that, that CO2 as the main cause of climate change and causes acidification needs to be cut at the, at the roots to illustrate we have nearly no more excellent reefs. These are uh, what is referred to as a cover of, let's say, 75 to 100 percent. So there are only a very few areas, like for example, in Tupataha area and also 
in areas which are not accessible like the Benham areas which has these excellent conditions. So pag mayroong kang uh, disturbance like uh, uh, typhoons or ano, ito yung mga unang na tatamaan. And it's and this industry, macro photography, it's bringing a lot of income to the to the municipality, to the local communities here. Kasi let's say yung mga local uh, spotters na they earn thousands uh, of pesos a year, ay uh, a day, uh, just uh, working as spotters for. Uh, Yung mga photographers na pumunta dito, mga sikat, ah, internationally uh, renowned na mga uh, macro photographers. So, ang laking, ano, ang laking uh, in terms of socio-economic benefits, yung coral reefs dito are very important for the, ano, for the local communities, for the businesses here, for the local government. Una, uh, kahit yung relasyon namin ha, bilang mga mangisda. Dati kasi wala kaming ano eh, wala kaming pakialaman kasi nag-enjoy kami sa maraming nahuli pero dahil sa epekto nitong uh, pagkasira ng mga bahora na ito at pagliit ng aming huli, uh, na, 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 apektuhan na yun, no? Pangalawa, sa tingin namin hindi lamang naman yung kabuhayan ang nagiging uh, masamang epekto nito. Kasi ka, kahit sa aming kalusugan bilang mga mangisda ay uh, apektado rin. Uh, una yung siyempre yung pagkain namin, pangalawa yung epekto ng init na nararamdaman ngayon. Ang pinakamalaking damage ng iha dito, minsan after strong typhoon pag nag-dive kami, may mga may mga coral heads talaga na gumugulong pababa. Uh, yung mga branching corals na babasa, lalo na mga nasa shallow area, especially if the typhoon hits us during low tide. Ang laki ng damage niyan sa mga dive sites namin. Pangalawa, dahil nga siguro sa mga poorly planned sa kamani sa development dito sa coastal areas, ang daming ano, silt na bumababa sa sa coral reefs namin, especially pag pag yung yung typhoon mo, ang daming dalang ulan, di ba? Pag mataas ang rainfall mo, yung mga yung mga silt pati mga basura galing sa taas. Puntahan sa sa reef na. I I have found a lot of inspiration and hope for our future, especially when we look at the last decade of marine protected area efforts by the MPA support network and uh, various uh, network uh, arrangements of both the scientific communities, the local communities, and the NGOs, and even the lo local governments together with our national agencies have been showing that there is actually uh, a way forward in these efforts. So, your information about, you know, whether we would have expected bleaching to happen and it did not in some places. These are important information. Why? Because these would be places that we should be protecting. No? Uh, big sabihin, they're not as sensitive as other places. For places naman na tinamaan ng bleaching, then we need to manage them better. So, things that we, you know, if we abuse them, for example, overfishing or yung mga destructive fishing, or even the amount of tourism that we allow for these places, we have to regulate so that they can they are able to recover from from the event. So, um, yeah, and I think it's better management of our coral reefs, especially in times of acute na mga events katulad ng bleaching. So, siguro, it just gives us an opportunity to emphasize again the value of our coral reefs sa Pilipinas and why we need to monitor these events and how that how much of it might affect yung mga ecosystem goods and services that we derive from our coral reefs ang panawagan namin sa gobyerno sana uh, gumawa ng mga mitigating measures no alimbawa suportahan nila yung aming CBCR program community based coastal resource management program na kung saan nagpapanumbalik nung nung 
nasirang habitat na ito. Pangalawa, sana tingnan ng gobyerno no, yung uh, malaking pangangailangan ng mga mangisda para proteksyonan. Hindi lamang sa aming kabuhayan, kundi ito sa buong industriya. So for Philippine Coral Bleaching Watch, um, what we still would want uh, people to do, the general public, is to participate uh, in the reporting of of uh, coral bleaching in the reef areas. What Greenpeace is doing now in the Philippines is to start and initiate a, a national discourse on how, the, on, on developing a national agenda that we can actually lobby and push at the UNF Tribal Sea negotiation. Because currently, there is no uh, robust position uh, by any other governments globally in terms of uh, pushing for uh, resiliency adaptation mechanism within the current negotiation to, to address the problem of climate change. So we hope that, so that is why we are bringing everybody, the fisher folk, the, the academic community, those who are being affected by, by severe and extreme weathers to come together, identify mechanisms, how on, on the best way we're going to respond to, to injustices brought by climate change by clearly coming up with commitments from the Philippine government and those other governments attending global negotiations to cut down and extract uh, accountability from the carbon majors so that we'll be able to pursue a sustainable future for everyone.